to go here in Pukopop you know, over in the dance arena. Incredible mm-hmm. reception that Rick and I had first time we'd gone out really as the, as the two of us. Yeah. Just amazing reception. You just mentioned that DVD was uh, something very special because uh, you got a password then and uh, you can check on the website and yeah. every week there were new songs, new photographs. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. must have been very busy. It was very time consuming, I've got to say. That we did pro- did, did well, you know what you were going to do when you, when you started it? I don't think we really understood what we were letting ourselves yeah. in for, but we promised. So every week there would be seven photographs, a film, a book and a new piece of audio that you could download for free. That We kept that up for, a, for every week for a year. Mm-hmm. And then we've carried on the, the underworldlive.com site, everything yeah. shifted to another site. Uh, we've kept that up every week too now. Mm-hmm. Because Underworld is not the only thing for you. Huh? It's not only the music, yeah. it's also images, uh, the site. It's, it's given us a, Underworld's given us a fantastic vehicle to do pretty much what we want to yeah. do now. So whether it's art books or, or movies or whatever, whatever it is, stuff on mm-hmm. the internet, or just fun stuff like the abandoned car uh, gallery that we've set up on with Dirty.org, the fan site out in the US. Um, just stuff that comes to you and you get these opportunities to work in art galleries, to work in you know festivals, to do concert tours. It's, um, it's pretty amazing. I never really would have thought mm-hmm. that, that the two of us would be doing this now. I just kind of thought maybe yeah. we'd be cooking burgers or something. Yeah, because um, when you mention, for example, uh, the Rolling Stones, everybody says, oh my God, are, st- are, are they still busy? But... <laughs> No one ever says that about Underworld. No, no one. If, if they do, they're very quiet and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 22 years now and uh, we've been together and, you know, st- we're still shocked, I suppose, after after so long of working together that there is still something which excites uh, us about working together, mm-hmm. about about the things that happen, about each, what each one brings to the mix. Um, it's an extraordinary band to be in for me and um, yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful to still be in it. You're together very long. Uh, don't you ever get tired of each other? All the time. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, you just some one of us does something and you kind of go, the thrill's still there. Yeah. On, um, uh, you also did some TV commercials, mm. music. Yeah, yeah. Don't you ever regret something you did for a commercial? Absolutely not, because no? the commercials that we did were in the early 90s, and two things happened. One was they were with our other company, Tomato, that make yeah. a lot of commercial work. Mm-hmm. Um, they did very beautiful work for things that were, were fine by me. I never did, and I never ever did uh, alcohol and cigarettes. You know, I could never justify that. Being somebody particularly who had a problem with alcohol, yeah. I could never justify selling that. The other stuff, you know, I didn't have a problem with. It also gave us the money to feed our families and not have to compromise our music as yeah. Underworld. So when mm-hmm. record companies were telling us what they thought we should or shouldn't be doing and when marketing men were saying, hey, this is what the kids want, we could say, you know, go stick it because mm-hmm. we're going to make the music that we want to make and let the dance floor, let people that actually buy our records decide it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, making making music for commercials gave us that freedom to set up this thing now mm-hmm. which is which is sort of quite independent of the pressures of the industry. You just mentioned alcohol. You stopped yeah. drinking about, about five years ago. Five years almost, ago, yeah. yeah. That's great. So <laughs> this is this is a new man. Uh, it's, it's getting there <laughs> <laughs> day by day. Yeah, you know, I don't profess to be any any angel. It's just you know, it's wrecking my life and the lives of the people around me. Yeah. My partner Rick, my wife. You know, everybody was just having a horrible time. Not least of all myself. You know, the nightmares yeah. that I would created in my head after 24 years of abuse was uh, extreme. So uh, it's taken a while, but. But I'm getting there. Yeah. But you didn't know it um, yourself at that time. No, I never did. I just thought it was everybody else that had a problem, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people think that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, on a festival like this, um, how's the atmosphere backstage? Oh, it's great. This is a very good festival. Look, it's, this is the weird thing. I'm going to sound really sycophantic here when I say this, but Belgium has the finest catering in the world, <laughs> the finest backstage. It really does. And we say that around the world. Where is the best food? We say, well, this is the best catering is in Belgium. And everyone laughs. And you go, no, it's actually true. The best catering? The best, what what the, do you eat? The best food, the best <laughs> backstage. What do, what do I eat? Well, these days I have to be kind of quite... Uh, specific about what I eat because I use up a lot of energy mm-hmm. and I can't eat uh, I, 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 five hours before a gig I can't eat because it's so physical on stage it's like, oh, like an athlete then you throw you know? up or what? yeah I mean the body would just kind of yeah. say I've got to get rid of that you know, yeah. so I can, so I can do, do all the physical stuff so breakfast and lunch are very very important yeah. and, and, and I just have to keep a very specific diet you know, somebody mm. sort of helps me with that you know, a lot of people mm. say eat or you'll fall over and um, 
you know, that's that's it for me. Yeah. The catering is okay, but how's your relationship with other artists backstage? It's never been a problem. Yeah. It's never been a problem. Whenever we meet people that we know, people like Express 2 are here today, who yeah. are uh, s uh, sort of label mates at Junior Boys mm -hmm. Own up until recently, and Ashley, who was a member of the band, was one of the first guys that actually bought quantities of their very first record for a, a record store called Black Market in, in London. So I always remember that. Always got a soft, soft spot for... Ashley and his band. Mm -hmm. Are there groups here you still want to see on stage? I would love to have, to have seen Guns N' Roses. I would <laughs> love to tomorrow. have seen. I know. Jane's Addiction, I really would have loved that to have seen. That was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> John Spencer Blues Explosion. That was yesterday. Yeah. But Korn, hopefully Korn will get to see. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we look forward to your concert this evening. Thanks. Uh, have a great show. Thank you. And we're going to listen to the new single, Two Months Off. Thanks cool. a lot, Korn. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You bring light in, you bring light in, you bring light in.